Hey, this is Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this week we are tackling a 1962 Chevy pickup from Hot Wheels. Um, everybody seems to be doing them on Instagram, and as much as I don't like to do what everybody else is doing, I kind of like this body style, so I'm doing it anyways. After last week's debacle with the uh, paint on the Mustang, I redid it. <laughs> and you can see actually how it was supposed to have looked in the first place. So you can see all the sparkles. Um, I also painted a couple other cars. Um, I put a candy red on this Dodge Dart, and it came out really good. I've actually put this right over the finish. I didn't prime it or do anything. It had a chrome finish, so it came out perfect. And this is a 69 Chevelle, um, kind of a pea yellow, <laughs> but uh, it really came out good. It's the tequila yellow. So um, just wanted to show you that it could be done, and I could do it. All right, so as I said, I have a 1962 Chevy. This is a newer casting. I actually just picked this up this week. Um, really, really love the body style. And, uh, you know, for what it is, it is. It's a chrome chrome interior slash grill slash bed with a plastic base. Um, I already took the liberty of drilling it out, so I didn't have to bore you with that. Um, I put it together just to make sure that everything fit and looks good. I've always loved these trucks. Uh, when I was in the Army and I was stationed in uh, El Paso, a buddy of mine had three of them. And uh, being from New England, uh, just to find one to begin with is rare. And then to find one in such great shape with no rust uh, was pretty amazing. So um, I was always jealous. So after I, I fit it, I put the screws back in the holes just to make sure um, nothing gets in there during the process of stripping and painting and everything else. So first step um, is obviously my big bucket of goo, which is leftover citrus strip from 8,000 other projects. It's kind of like a little uh, little stew of, um, of crap, <laughs> but I do add new stuff <laughs> on occasion, and it works really good. So um, I, I leave this stuff in there for, for a couple hours. Um, I work on other parts of the project or other projects, so I don't rush it. Um, I find if I rush, I take it out too soon so I'm gonna change the wheels um, plastic bases are real easy you can just clip the tabs or bend them out of the way with a screwdriver um, I always end up prying them with a screwdriver I always end up snapping them anyway so it's just as easy for me to cut um, I usually cut the single tab and leave the double so that way I can kind of slide the axle back underneath and uh, bend them down I kind of went back and forth on this um, those are some monoblock all black wheels and I know it's a little blurry having a hard time with my with my camera um, initially this is what I was going to go with um, and it does it looks really really tough and, I'm, and that's the look I was going for um, however they just I don't know I wasn't feeling it so I ended up swapping them out but I'll show you that in a little bit the body's really in good shape um, which it should be because it's brand new um, the wheels ended up coming off of a I don't know, one of those Marvel comics or something, I don't know, Street Fighter uh, rigs. The tires are actually just the right size. They're perfect. They fill up the wheel wells uh, inside perfectly. Um, the only thing that kind of stunk about them is they have the, the pink um, sidewalls. But I just turned the uh, rubber inside out, and uh, which is never a good practice, by the way. And I turned those inside out, and that way it's just a black wall tire. Um, so here I am fitting it, making sure that everything rolls and looks good. Um, and I'm really happy with the way those tires came out. So you can see the center section of the hood. Um, I end up grinding that off, and I also touch up and clean. Um, for, I mean, for a new casting, it's got a little bit of error, you know, errors here and there. Um, so I wanted to make sure I took care of that. The I wanted to put a tonneau cover on this. And this was a little bit more difficult or involved than I thought. So I cut it out of some um, thin plastic card, evergreen stuff. And right here, I'm just kind of fitting it to, I cut it roughly to size and I slowly started. I, I always cut a little over and then I'll sand down to make sure it fits. That way I get a nice snug, snug fit for it. Um, so it came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. Um, I, I do a little bit more because I wanted it to hinge and not just be a solid cover. Um, I hadn't seen anybody do it, and I actually wasn't even sure how to do it, to be honest with you. 
Um, so a little combination of um, some round plastic evergreen tubing, really thin and um, just big enough for a paper clip to fit through. And I used almost like I was going to hinge a door, and uh, it, it came out all right. It's it I probably could. This is, I'm sure there's a better way of doing it, um, but this kind of worked for me where I how I wanted it to hinge and where it had to go to hinge. So um, it, overall, it it worked out really well. And it's just a little bit more time consuming than I thought. It's, you know, when, you, when you're fiddling around with all these things, it's a little bit of trial and error. Um, so I wanted the hinge part to sit inside the bed. And then I ended up taking the, the ends of the um, paper clip and having them sit on the actual toner cover itself. Um, I wanted a little bit more space in the bed. These wheel wells were not in the way, um, but I'm cutting them off anyways. <laughs> Um, it's just, they actually, actually, you know what, they, they were a little bit, I could have just ground them down a tad, but the height of the wheel, top of the wheel wells was really close to the top edge of the bed because of the way everything's recessed and a tonal cover, um, it, I probably could have used a thinner piece of stock, but it was just enough where it was hitting it and it wasn't sitting flush with the top of the bed. So by cutting these off, it worked out really well. Um, I was able to get the tonal cover to sit flush and it wasn't hitting anything. Um, what <clears throat> I used a Dremel tool to cut these off. You can probably snip them if you wanted to. Um, and I'll just clean off the, the hot melted plastic with a sharp or semi-sharp X-Acto knife. Uh, but yeah, that worked out really well. Once I, like I said, the wheels weren't rubbing in any way, shape, or form. Um, but the tonal cover would certainly hit it. So if you're not putting a tonal cover, it's not something you have to do. And uh, here I am once again of the 8,000 times I fit something. Uh, my worst fear is putting it together and it just not fitting. So um, at this point, I was kind of hemming and hawing about paint as well. So the tonal cover, you can see the hinge right here that I ended up making. I'm just kind of holding it with my thumb at the moment. But I was kind of going back and forth. So I ended up priming it with a uh, Rust-Oleum gray primer just so I could see all the uh, imperfections a little bit better. There you go. Now you can see how uh, the hinge was on the tonal cover. And the only thing I really masked off was the uh, the grill because that's a chrome, chrome grill. I get these skulls from... Ken over at the Gaslands page. I do do some Gaslands builds if you guys follow this channel at all. And I'm always looking for an excuse to use skulls. So I pop one off the off the tree, <coughs> excuse me, and um, where the where it hits the sprue, I just sanded it down a little bit to make it make it flush. Then I'm going to use my pin vise and not drilling in my finger. I'm actually holding the piece. <laughs> um, I'm going to drill a hole maybe about an eighth inch deep. Um, but you can't really go too much further than that because these are really, really small. Um, and then the same stock I'll use to make like a Hot Wheels axle. And I don't know the size off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Um, I'm just going to cut a piece of that and glue it to the bottom of the skull. And that will, in turn, make a kind of a rat rod style shifter. So I've got to drill um, a hole in the, um, the interior kind of it's sort of a faux um, center console so I put it in there that's kind of what it's going to look like um, again it's not to scale I just thought it looked cool and it was just one of those kind of like a rat fink type of you know custom culture um, vibe to it so I kind of went with that so once again I'm fitting things for the 800th time <laughs> making sure everything works and uh, fits properly. I got another again from the same guy Ken. I ended up with uh, a tree full of engines so I'm gonna decide to put a a blown engine sticking out of the front of the 62 so I need to cut a hole in the roof uh, excuse me in the hood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna punch down three holes and I'm gonna drill three holes and those are kind of like a starting base for me to be able to file out the, the size that I need. This is a little tricky, um, not for any reason except for the post that's in the front 
is really close to where I wanted to put the engine. So I didn't want to set the engine too far forward. It would look stupid. And I didn't want to put it too far back. So I had to pretty much hug the the uh, the post to make sure. So when you're drilling and filing, you have to be really careful not to drill into the post at all. But overall, it came out pretty good. Um, I started with a small bit, and then you can see a couple different sizes I got on the on the table. So once I've drilled them out big enough to uh, always clean out your shavings because I end up putting my hand in them 90% of the time. <laughs> but um, you can see there I got it all filed out. Came out really well. Now I want to put a piece. It had like a surfboard molded, half a surfboard molded into the back of these in the bed. And um, I didn't really want that in there, so I smoothed out the bed. And then I'm making a um, another piece of evergreen here into the size that I need, so it would just be something flush. You don't see it at all. I mean, literally, you don't see it. But um, it was just something that was bothering me, and I wanted to make sure I did it and did it right. Um, it just kind of keeps a clean aesthetic uh, as far as the bed with the tonal cover. I think it just kind of fit. And now I just want to cover these um, ugly-ass hinges <laughs> for uh, the tonal cover. So I'm making a cover for that. And I was still at this point kind of hemming and hawing about color. And I've done enough candy stuff to for a couple days. <laughs> I needed a break. And I stripped it down anyways again um, and ended up painting it. I call it Hot Rod Red Primer. It's um, just a, a rust-colored primer from Rust-Oleum. Um, I painted it, and then I matte cleared it. And I kind of did this on purpose, and I'll explain it in a second. So now I'm mixing up some Createx. Um, base coat black with some 4012 and I'm going to spray the body the tonal cover uh, with that because everything so far at this point has a red primer and a matte clear on it and I'm going for a certain look here and again I'll get to the point where I'll explain it um, this base coat stuff goes on really really easy um, it acts as a primer. I didn't have to prime the vehicle. I'm priming it on purpose on this, but you can lay this black base down on bare die cast metal um, without a problem and it, it adheres great. Um, and then it's a matter of all the detail work. The, the skull, I broke out my Citadel paints. I painted it white and then I ended up going over it again with um, some Screaming Skull, I believe is the name of it. It's kind of like an eggshell white. And for all the metallic stuff, uh, like the motor, I'm using lead belcher as a base. And then I go over again with um, iron breaker, which is a, just a tad bit brighter, but it's not chrome. And I'm hitting the exhaust tips as well. Um, the interior, I also matte cleared. And I did it for the chrome as well, because it helps dull the chrome so it's not so sh plastic shiny. Uh, it just really, you do it a lot when you're doing modeling. And it just helps break the um, that real sharpness of the of the chrome that comes with inherent with the plastic. So I'm doing the bottom exhaust, um, tail lights. Um, there really wasn't much else to detail on this. You know the the, the lights in the front. Um, here I am putting that screaming skull on the skull. <laughs> um, the shifter I re I'm really happy with it. It came out really good. Um, so, so here's the reason I only did the Hot Rod Red Primer and then clear coated it. I was hoping, and it worked out, that once I laid the black down, I could start sanding the black off to a certain point and kind of have a layered paint look. So there's parts of the truck that are black. There's parts of the truck that show through almost like a rust color um, underneath it. And then parts of it that's just kind of like a bare metal. And I'm sort of going for a rat rod style look with this, with the shifter and the, the paint and everything else. So I think it came out really well. Um, it, I can't think of another way to have done it to try to get the look I was after. Um, I'm open to suggestions on, on my next one. Um, I know there's weathering techniques and everything else. but So as a reminder, here's what we started with. Um, chrome everything. Chrome interior, chrome bed, um, chrome exhaust tips, blue with the funky stripes and stickers and decals, so on and so forth. Sunroof, all that stuff. So I cut the sunroof off, and here we go. This is 
this is what we have. I actually had a surfboard kicking around from a Diora 2 or something like that. And uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I'm, I'm more happy because I didn't have to really go crazy with paint. <laughs> but you can see the effect I was after, and it is exactly what I was after. Um, I'm really happy with this. And I want to thank everybody for subscribing and commenting and liking. And, hey, I'll catch you on the next one.